Today, we're going over all the reference sites that helped me out on my journey. And hopefully, those sites are gonna help you out as well. So let's go. Welcome back to the journey, everybody. Whether you're researching sites before you buy an action figure, checking on an accessory that you already own, or just curious and wanna do some light reading, since the dawn of the internet, you don't have to own every figure and variant to become educated on the vintage line. Now all it takes is some curiosity and a search engine. So today, we're gonna go down the best reference sites that I use to do all my research. So let's go. First off is the Imperial Gunnery. For checking what weapons came with each figure, they have a detailed breakdown of all accessory and weapons classes. The Jedi Temple Archives. For MOC reference, figure and accessory reference, release date, wave information, and inserts and catalog guides, not only for the vintage line, but for all lines of Star Wars ever made. The Variant Villain. For information on variants, weapon and accessory classes, and virgins, Country of Origin classes, it's the most comprehensive guide to understanding variants out there. You can also join their Facebook group for asking questions, learning, and updates on their site. Rebel Scum. For fan forums and discussions on every vintage topic you can think of, there's a great forum page for inserts that I often go to. Also, MOC and figure visual guides. If you have a question that you can't find on other reference sites, Bring it here and ask in the forum pages. Star Wars Tracker. Go here for sold prices and data points for every single figure, playset, vehicles, and ships graded or ungraded, boxed or loose. Data points come from eBay, and this is very useful for comparison to other prices in today's market. You have to pay to use this app, but the cost alone is worth the money you will save on knowing current and past data points. Galacticfigures.com is a vintage and modern figure database where you can view all figures ever made of a certain character and get a link to find prices of these figures currently being sold on eBay. It's a great way to see full character figure libraries, check out current prices, and get clarification on figures in your collections or ones you may still need to get. StarWarsForum.uk a forum with every topic you can think of. You can hit search to find topics that you need and their list of topics is endless with reference sites and guides of where to look. I recently showed this on an episode to reference baggies and that's just the tip of the iceberg on what's on this site. Jawa's Armory, a list of weapons and accessories that will answer a lot of your questions, give you visual guides, and help you assess your own collection should you ever have a concern or just wanna read up on your figure's accessories. Yakface.com, forums, visual reference guides, and links to what's hot and for sale. Vintage to modern, great for modern collectors to know what's coming up. And there's always Facebook. Join as many Facebook groups as you can to ask questions, see what's being sold, traded, auctioned off, and become a part of your collecting genre community. There are pages for every type of subgenre as well. From baggies, to coins, to paper and inserts, MOC, customs, you're gonna find it on Facebook and get valuable connections to guide you in your collection journey. And if you have any suggestions on sites that you like to go to for vintage, please drop them in the comments because I want to know. And as a community, we can all share the knowledge. And also, most of the reference sites that I just mentioned, they all accept PayPal for donations. So if you use these sites once a week, twice a week, every day of the week, please drop a donation. Even a donation of 10 bucks helps keep these sites active and offering us, the collectors, free information. So using all this knowledge from the sites that I just went to, today I'm gonna pick up a figure that really wasn't a figure, but it was offered in a playset. When I was shaping my run, I wanted to include, yeah, the regular release of the carded figures, but there were also some figures that I found interesting that were never carded and figures that I think are important to the vintage Kenner history. Figures like the Blue Snaggletooth, the Dianoga Trash Monster, Yak Face, and the R2-D2 that you can build in the Droid Factory. It's Kenner's new Star Wars Droid Factory that you put together to make your own droids. So, rather than getting the entire playset, I found a lot of sellers who were selling this by itself. So I included this in my run to get. Like I said, I think it's a big part 
of their Kenner history, and I want to include it in that collection. Not only as a cool figure that I can show off, but it's really a talking point that completes the entire Kenner story. So let's talk about the Droid Factory itself before we get into the figure. Released in 1979, the Kenner Droid Factory is the most interactive playset and allows for unlimited imagination. Once the playset is built, the main feature is the crane in where kids can move the parts from the supply zone to the build zone. It comes with various parts including connector pins, six droid bases, arms and hooks, axles, legs, and the R2 astromech parts. In 1980, Kenner updated the packaging for the Empire Strikes Back movie release and included Obi-Wan and Luke looking to buy droids. The Kenner Canada version was only available in the Empire Strikes Back version, and the Palatoy version was completely different. The main reason for this was that they had to cut production costs to be able to get the contract. So instead of using cheaper materials, their design team came up with a great alternative approach. It's a variation of the original, but great nonetheless, and features different packaging than the North American version. The R2 droid you were able to build from the given parts, and the main feature wasn't available in the regular carded version, or the early bird offer of R2, which is the third leg feature, which allowed R2 to move quickly across rough terrain in the movie and was an awesome feature for kids to finally have the fully realized version toy of the R2-D2. Prices for this R2 vary widely due to the fact that its condition is hard to find in almost a mint condition. And the prices for the complete droid factory with the box included are running at average prices of $250 to $350 for a nice unsealed box with a complete set. But for the R2 figure on its own, they're running from $150 to $250. So if you're in the market to buy a complete box version, it might be a good idea to get that instead. Loose version prices are super wide, and you can find various parts for sale if you wanna go that way. But you can find good examples for as low as $100 all the way to $200 to $250 for a complete nice version. So we went on Facebook where there was a deal or no deal auction going on, where a seller posts pictures of a figure and it's up to the buyer to post a price. When a seller arrives at a price that they're willing to sell it for, a deal is struck. So I was able to grab this figure for under $100, which ended up being $100.50 with shipping and taxes included. So I was super excited to get this box and it's figures like this that I never knew existed until this run, and I feel like this is a part of the total story in the Kenner history. And although I could have went a step further and bought a complete box of the whole factory, I only wanted a loose R2 figure for my display case. But who knows, maybe in the future, I might invest in a whole box and include that R2 inside the set. And this is the first time that I'm handling this figure ever. To be honest, the figure that I got isn't in the best of shape. One leg stays on, but the other leg fits into the hole, but doesn't stay on fully and falls off with the lightest touch. And also, the third leg fits on, but it doesn't stay in secure. And if I pick it up, it falls out completely. So I bought this at the low end of the market price. So if you're paying more than $100, make sure to ask the seller if these issues that I'm having are there on yours. Now there is major cloudiness on the dome and it's not clear at all. And there is some slight yellowing and fading on the sticker. But for my display case, this figure is a great example. If I wanted to grade it, which I'm not, I would get a very poor grade. But again, I'm super excited to include this example into my collection. And if I was to buy this figure for a grade, I would just go ahead and buy a completely graded figure already. Cause searching on eBay, this one's hard to find in really good condition, plus, you don't know if the legs, the joints, and the wheel on the bottom is gonna fall out or works at all. So let's cross off this R2 from our list, and we got this on the Imperial Commissary on Facebook for a total price of $100.50 after shipping and taxes. And let's place this droid in our collector displays case as a variant to our 1977 R2-D2 droid using our variant extension plank. And with this purchase, this completes our R2 run with the four R2s from the Kenner line. So besides the graded R2s that we need, our loose run for the R2 has hit its milestone. I'm super happy that like my Leia line, 
I'm completing my R2 line of the loose toys. But as I hit these milestones, it's getting a little sad because we're coming closer and closer, at least to the loose run, being over. So thank you for going through some reference sites that you need to put in your arsenal of tools. And we also went through the brief history and info for the droid playset. And finally, getting our R2 droid from the playset that completes our set. And also, thanks to Holo Chronicles for sending me this hat. And we finally have our own merch store. So head on down to the descriptions to get your hands on some Padawan collector gear. And yes, there's even some Rami and Jaws gear. And here's a hint for a future episode. I recently bought a completed Millennium Falcon at an auction from my good buddy over at the Super Awesome Geek Show. That Millennium Falcon is on its way. And Nilda from Appetite for Collectibles is gifting us the training ball. So we're getting that also. So when that gets here, we're gonna do a complete review on the Millennium Falcon, my second ship that I've gotten on this run. So that's coming up on an episode pretty soon. But if you found this episode interesting, please hit that like button. It does support the channel. And also, if you need any collecting supplies for your collecting journey, down there in the descriptions are links for things that you might need. And when you do click and buy from those links, it does support the channel, so thank you for that. And if you wanna see more Star Wars collecting content from me, please hit that subscribe button and also that notification bell so you can know when videos go live. I post videos every Wednesday and Saturday. And as always, my friends, thank you, and I will see you next time. If you're new to the channel, check out the welcome video or just check out the next episode. And please subscribe if you want to follow the journey. And remember, there is no shame in being a Padawan.